morning. It's a uh, pleasure to be here this morning and open the meeting in the absence, uh, physical absence of Bill Lames. He's away, but he's here on the phone. Um, he's asked me to convene the meeting, and so I'm going to do that. And uh, we'll begin with the observation of a moment of silence. Please rise for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Save a seven second delay or All right. Uh, in the absence of David Weisnick, He's not with you, is he, Bill? No, he's not. Okay, thank you. Um, look for a, a motion to accept the uh, minutes as presented by Kathy. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes. Any additions or deletions or questions? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. Go on to our treasurer's report, which this is new. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we had receipts on January 30th and 31st of $2,523,040.15, brought us to a total cash of $2,727,739.72. Our expenditures this week were $2,339,080.08. Our tax claim is $168,379.52. That leaves us a balance of $220,280.12. Now, we did have to uh, start our, well, we loaned from our reserve, so I took $500,000 to help cover expenses. I still do have some money set aside for the next one or two payrolls. Uh, over above that, but we had our insurance and our payroll this week, and that's why it was so high. Seek a motion to approve it. I make a motion to approve the treasurer's report as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, I should ask Commissioner Litz, are you okay with this format? Were you the vice chair? You're okay with that. I just want to make sure you're all right. Michelle Eder, Director of Human Resources. Leanne Schenk, Human Resources Assistant. <clears throat> Moving on to personnel transactions under resignations and terminations. Elizabeth Young's first deputy in the controller's office, retirement effective April 7th, with her last working day being April 6th. Christopher Kreitzer, telecommunicator, resignation effective January 28th. <coughs> Dylan Shell, telecommunicator, resignation effective January 18th. Tammy Feidler from NLPN, resignation effective January 31st. And Ashley Wynn, casual call developmental assistant, resignation effective January 17th. I also move to accept the resignations and terminations with special attention to the longevity and service of Elizabeth Young of 31 years. That's wonderful. I wish you well. Second. No, okay. I'll, second. I'll second the motion. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any comment or question? Bring none all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same signs, so moved. Under changes to status, transfers, and promotions, I have a motion to approve Warden Robert Carnes' recommendation to reclassify one of his current general clerk C positions to a medical billing clerk position at a grade 7 on the non-union salary chart, effective February 25th, 2018, and this was previously discussed during the budget hearings. I just to approve this. Okay. So make a motion to approve. Second. We have been seconded that we approve Warden Carnes' request. Any question or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. 
Eric Thaler, promotion from 911 supervisor in EMA to deputy director of 911 in EMA at the rate of $2,386.04 by weekly effective February 12th. And Izad Morejo, change of status from casual call developmental assistant at Renova to full time developmental assistant at Renova. No change in his rate effective February 12th. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those changes. Any question? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, Opposed, same sign, so moved. Under other transactions, President Judge Towalk would like to hire Richard Huber, certified interpreter, at the rate of $2,192.31 by weekly, effective February 20th. Warden Carnes would like to hire Amber Butler as a medical billing clerk at the rate of $898.72 by weekly, effective February 26th. President Judge Towalk would like to hire Anthony Frost as a probation officer one at the rate of $1,581 by weekly, effective February 5th. Renova would like to hire Yvonne Baptiste as a full-time developmental assistant at the rate of $11.56 per hour with a 45 cent shift differential effective February 12th. And Building Security would like to hire Anita Spots as a part-time door monitor at the rate of $10.33 per hour effective February 12th. And I have a correction, Amber Butler at the prison, the medical building clerk is a rehire. I make a motion to approve those hiring. I'll second. I do have a question. I'm not wanting to assume anything. The certified inspectors, um, interpreter. Yes. <coughs> Interpreters. Um, specialty is Spanish. Yes. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? It's been moved and seconded. Any other comment? Hearing none. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. So moved. Moving on to salary board, motion to approve all the transactions previously read plus the following. These are all incremental increases, full-time correctional officers at the prison, all to the rate of $14.79 per hour, all effective February 25, 2018. Franklin Camacho, Brandon Franklin, Corey McKinney, Jonathan Medina, Adam Phillippe, and Dakota Widmer. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept those changes. <coughs> Question or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. The mandated conference seminars. Karen Hess from Domestic Relations would like to attend the 33rd annual Spring DRS Director Meeting in State College, May 14th, 15th, and 16th, with lodging, mileage, and meals reimbursement. Mandated by BCSE. <coughs> Tara Vankovic and Tiffany Sherman and Sarah Shirk from Domestic Relations would like to attend the PACSETI training in Harrisburg, March 28th and 29th. Mileage and meals parking reimbursement mandated by BCSE. And Bob Dow, Joe Morales from EMA would like to attend the PM, PEMA in service training in Harrisburg, February 7th and 8th. Meals reimbursement mandated by PEMA. Joe Morales, John Wilson, and Gary Vernon from EMA would like to attend the Hazardous Weather and Flooding Preparedness in Harrisburg, May 22nd and 23rd, Mileage Meals Tolls Reimbursement, mandated by PEMA. Eric Fowler from EMA would like to attend the following two trainings, New Tech Officer Training in Harrisburg, March 28th, with Mileage Meals Parking Tolls Reimbursement, mandated by PSE, and Mandatory TAC Training in Hershey, April 10th, Mileage Meals Parking Tolls Reimbursement, mandated by PSP. Patty Tingen from MHODEI would like to attend the ODP Quality Management Certification Class in Mechanicsburg, April 11th and 12th, Mileage Meals Tolls Reimbursement, 12 credits, mandated by ODP. John Singletary from the Sheriff's Office would like to attend the Instructor Course in Harrisburg, April 23rd, 24th, and 25th. $897 total registration fee mandated by PCCE. Robert Meese from the Planning Department would like to attend the PCCA Symposium in King Prussia, March 28th, $65 total registration fee, tolls reimbursement, six credits mandated by Department of Labor and Industry. Samantha Chesney and Christopher Fry from Probation Services would like to attend the Sharpen Your Edge Perception of Danger in Lidditz. March 12th, meals reimbursement, 7.5 credits, mandated by PBDP. Susan Christner from Probation Services 
would like to attend the new TAC officer training in Harrisburg, March 28th, meals and parking reimbursement, six credits mandated by PSP. Brittany Koenig, Susan Putt, and Fonny Warner from <clears throat> Probation Services would like to attend the foreign organization skills for the overwhelmed in Har Harrisburg, April 4th, $238.80 total registration fee, meals reimbursement, six credits mandated by PPP. Carla Arnold and Susan Putt from Probation Services would like to attend the Developing Your in the Emotional Intelligence in Harrisburg, March 19th, $119.20 registration fee, meals reimbursement, six credits mandated by PPP. Brenda San Diego and Susan Putt from Probation Services would like to attend Breaking Bad Communications Habits in Harrisburg, March 2nd. $159.20 registration fee, meals reimbursement, six credits, and a Susan Christner from Probation Services would like to attend the 2018 Clean Training in Hershey, April 10th, meals reimbursement, four credits, and by JCJC. Brenda Santiago and Jody Little and Amanda Ramos from Probation Services would like to attend Managing Multiple Priorities and Projects in Lancaster. March 29th, $170.80 registration fee with meals reimbursement, six credits mandated by PDPP. Janet Wolf from Probation Services would like to attend the Extraordinary Administrative Professional in York, February 20th, $59.60 registration fee, meals reimbursement, six credits mandated by PDPP. Brenda Santiago, Bonnie Warner, Amanda Ramos from Probation Services would like to attend the CPCMS 2018 Winter Workshop in Bethlehem. February 15th, meals reimbursement, two and a quarter credits, mandated by PBPP. Deborah Zachman, Carla Arnold, Jody Little, and Susan Putt from Probation Services would also like to attend the CPC MS 2018 Winter Workshop in Reading, February 16th, with meals reimbursement, two and a quarter credits, mandated by PBPP. And Susan Miller would like to attend the CPC MS 2018 Winter Workshop in Exton, on March 8th with meals reimbursement, two and a quarter credits, PDPP. And Jermaine McQueen from Probation Services would like to attend the OC training in Lancaster, March 29th, meals reimbursement, four credits, mandated by JCPC. Seek a motion to approve the mandated conference attendance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions on any of those requests? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Under requested, Shannon McMinn from Area Agency on Aging would like to attend the Aging Mastery Program in Lebanon March 20th and 27th, April 3rd, 10th, 17th, and 24th, and May 1st, 8th, 15th, and 22nd. No registration fee, mileage reimbursement. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that area agency on aging request. Any questions? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, same sign, so moved. Joe Morales, Gary Verna, Jason Weichel, and Carl Wensler from EMA would like to attend the 2018 Three Mile Island Training Day in Mannheim, February 3rd. No registration fee with mileage and meals reimbursement. Make a motion to approve the requested conference to TMI. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that training. Any questions? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same signs. So moved. And Kirk Giuliani from the Sheriff's Office would like to attend the NFDD Instructor Certification Course in Belfonte, April 19th and 20th, $470 total registration fee with lodging and meals reimbursement. And this uh, is budgeted, Sheriff, and I need mean for the office, correct? I'm sorry? Kirk Giuliani <coughs> is budgeted and a need for the office. Yes, it is. It's budgeted through the training budget. So moved. Again, it's been moved and seconded that we approve that uh, certification course. Any questions? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same signs, so ordered. Thank you. Gordon. If I may ask you, yes, sir. Very, very quickly, that's Eric Fowler, um, Deputy Director of 911. Yes. The Director of 911. Would that be, I don't know what their organizational map looks like. That. 
So I don't know if they have an EMA director. Then a director of the 911 is Bob the director of 911. Bob's the director. Eric's the director. Is the deputy director of 911. Okay. So they're yeah they're they're having sort of categorical deputies. Correct, mm -hmm. And Joe Morales is the deputy director of EMA. How many deputy directors are there? Two now. Okay. There's so. a bit of restructuring going on there uh, from the last year's budget that we talked about. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the last part of that. Yeah, and he may talk about that this morning. Actually. Yeah, he's coming in. Just the uh, name change the rest of it. All right, we have our director of our elections, Michael. Would you like to proceed? Uh, Michael Anderson, <clears throat> voter registration. Excuse me. Um, good morning. Uh, I am here today to ask the uh, board of elections to uh, <clears throat> formally approve the. Uh, request that I had made as far as the major political parties here in Lebanon County, which is the Democratic and Republican Party. Those are the two that have qualified on the county level for the major political party. Motion? I'll make a move, move, to, move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Democratic and Republican parties as presented. Any questions? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, same sign, so moved. Thank you. Yes, Gordon. I do have questions concerning what uh, the, the Bureau of Elections is doing regarding uh, the congressional races and what may or may not change uh, in a, in a uh, remapping of the congressional districts. Um, what is the absolute latest time that uh, that you will, would be able to make any kind of a changes? Good question. Uh, basically, at this point, uh, with the, the guidance of the Department of State, um, we are going forward with the election calendar we have now. So, what that entails for us locally at this point is the only petitions that we have uh, are handing out and will accept. Um, in my office at this point is the local Democratic um, committee members. That's the, um, it will be on the, on the ballot for us. Everything else petition-wise will be through the Department of State. Uh, they have issued a, a memo, I don't know if you saw it, I actually brought them with me. <coughs> and I do believe I pass this on to the, the board as well, but I, I do have copies if you need to see one. That um, they have basically instructed us to, to uh, go on as normal and that whenever the petition process, which starts on February 13th, um, commences, they will um, hand out those, those petitions for every office except the congressional district. Uh, and basically what they're doing at this point is they're in a wait and see mode. Obviously the, the state Supreme Court has issued their ruling and has given the General Assembly and the governor deadlines that um, they have said that they need to meet. So at this point, um, with that ruling, there really is no congressional districts until they get remapped or until another court order comes down changing what the state Supreme Court does. So to answer your question, we're kind of waiting for guidance from them since everything goes through the Department of State for these, these candidates and these positions that will be on the ballot. Uh, as far as a deadline, the only deadline that we've been given so far is, is what that has come back down from the state Supreme Court, which is the, the dates that they have been given. I can tell you that a lot of us uh, election directors are, are worried just uh, because it's, it's, the, the clock will be ticking and obviously we have to, to program ballots and get everything ready. Uh, but the longer it goes, um, you know, I don't know how that will, you know, will play out. Um, but um, I'm hopeful it will be some type of resolution, either new maps or we'll continue with ones we have now. Um, but we're kind of waiting for the Department of State with uh, you know, how we'll proceed going forward with that. Thank you. They, they have the ability to change the election schedule. At this point, they're telling us to continue with what it is right now. And, and what's at stake in Lebanon County is that the ballots for the 6th and the 15th could, could change by, by precinct. Absolutely. Right. It could change. You know, we could have more, we could have less, we could have the same. Uh, it all depends on, on what comes Or a new congressional district. 
and, and, and we all do. Yeah, and that's one of the the you know that you hear a lot about is it's a candidate that thought they're going to run, you know, in the fifteenth <clears throat> may not be in the fifteenth anymore. No longer lives in the district. Yeah. yeah. So you know that's one of the the items that uh, you know that they're dealing with. I can tell you that we've had requests in my office for like walking lists and things like that for the districts as they were before. We'll honor those. Uh, so I do have a gentleman that asked for a walking list for the, I believe it was the 15th congressional district, so you know, we have that CD made and we'll do that, but we do let them know, make sure they're aware of the fact that this is all kind of in limbo, it could change, you could end up getting a list that end up not being what it will be in the end, but we just don't know. Mr. Lutz had a question. Yeah. Yes, uh, i just like to verbalize that there are a couple of options here. One is the court and or the legislature meet the deadline and the election goes on as normal. But the other option, um, there's two other options. One is they extend the date for all the offices. But the third option, which I think needs the most attention is that if they go on with all the other races and then hold a special election for Congress, there is a large sum of money that is going to come from counties that is not in our budget. And I hope and pray that the state will reimburse us for those additional expenses. Yeah, and it even goes beyond that because you, then you're talking about the resources of you know, trying to find, uh, making sure our local places will be available on those dates to be polling locations. Uh, then you're also talking about uh, you know, recruiting and having poll workers to be able to man those for that special election, along with obviously the cost that will be involved with that. You're right. So I, that, right. To, to me, worst case scenario would be uh, I agree, would but need I... to have a third election the, this calendar. Uh, obviously, even moving the primary election will be some of those a same. Yeah, so I'm hopeful that there will be a, a resolution that will work for everybody that if we end up keeping the election calendar the way we have it. I just, I didn't know if your state association was actively they listing the, the different um, negatives. Yes, yeah, so they're working actually with CCAP as well, uh, but uh, yeah, letting them know exactly kind of how we feel as far as uh, not only just the cost um, and, you know, and any time you have any time or all the time, but a lot of time when you have special elections, voter turnout plummets. Um, so that's something else I think that they need to think about. But yes, those concerns are, are definitely being, uh, DOS is, is very well aware of them, but uh, you know, making sure even the governor's office, because the governor at this point has, you know, um, said about, you know, extending even the date of when these deadlines will, will be met as far as uh, the new map. But that's even pushing into when the time frame for the petition process right. happens. So then that would have to be looked at and then be kind of a rush to get the ballots ready. And if I remember correctly, and I'd like an update on this if it's mm -hmm. changed, the PEDs have to be held for a certain length of time in case there's a challenge. So we don't have enough PEBs to have new ones for a special no, election. You, you would have to basically rewrite them. I mean, you would have to have it reprogrammed and then rewrite them. But, to erase them and rewrite them. I mean, there's no way you wouldn't have. Yeah, the point we, we is, have we can't right. erase them. No, we have a number of challenges that PE, can happen. Right, we have a number of PEBs that we would have, so we would almost have to buy new ones. If you're exactly. talking about not being able, if you would have to keep a certain election on a set of PEBs, you would have yes. to purchase a whole new set. If exactly. you're talking about yes, correct. And, and I just want to make sure the state hears and knows what we as counties yes. have to face. Yes. Yeah, well, we are definitely, the association is definitely making them aware of that. Um, the Department of State, one of the good things with the Department of State is they're, they're very good about communicating with our association. Um, and so they definitely are aware. I think it's sometimes getting that information to the governor's office and the General Assembly sometimes. Thank you. I just right. felt it needed here. So yeah. thank you Absolutely. for sharing. Nope. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. You're in election. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We're going to adjourn the election board and resume the regular meeting. Okay. Sure. It's been moved to a bill. Second to adjourn the. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, second. All in favor, aye. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. So you can click
to introduce yourselves and then you may proceed. Absolutely. I'm Bob Dowd, Director of Emergency Management. Gary Berna, uh, as my chief. Well, I have it uh, grants, hazmat report, and then uh, agency. Okay, so the first grant we're here to discuss is the annual EMPG emergency management performance grant. It subsidizes four positions within our departments. Uh, we are applying for $157,177.19. Uh, once this is submitted, we will issue a formal grant agreement. We'll bring back to you for Seek a motion to approve the request of that grant. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any question or comment? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh -huh. Oh, same sign, so moved. The next grant is the <coughs> uh, this report, which is a report, sorry. HMRF report. Okay. It's a hazardous materials emergency response preparedness report. Each year, FEMA requires uh, us, as in HAZMAT or uh, LEPC, to submit a report. Um, and this report weighs heavily on the HMRF grant, which is the Hazardous Material Response Fund grant, and, and what we get uh, with that. So, uh, a couple of areas of interest, as I wrote to Mr. Dowd, 43 of our facilities in Lebanon County have sulfuric acid which is an extremely hazardous substance, which requires a planning, a plan, an off-site plan. Um, 22 facilities have chlorine, and 29 facilities in the county have ammonia. So those three uh, are the most chemicals we have in this county um, that are extremely hazardous. So, just some points I want to make. Nope. Do you need that to be accepted, or is it just you do need it? I make a motion to accept the EMPG um, hazardous material response report. Or this is the second this one. Okay, just the hazardous materials Correct. report. Yes. Second. I moved and seconded that we accept Gary's report. Any question or comment? Hearing none. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, same sign. So moved. Third item we're here to discuss is a full request to change Lebanon County Emergency Management to the Lebanon County Department of Emergency Services. And this request is to better reflect what we do as a department. Our emergency management is just one piece. Other pieces are 901, HAZMAT, and all of our technical services we provide to the public safety in Lebanon County. All these things are, are parallels and don't necessarily report directly to the emergency management piece. So emergency management will become a parallel underneath the Department of Emergency Services. And this is becoming a, uh, a trend? In yes. The, year the majority of the other counties actually Of the other fifth class counties, uh, seven of them use a Department of Emergency Services or Department of uh, Public Safety. Sorry, six of them. Is there any, uh, well, Gordon, you may have a question or so, but uh, we'd like to get a motion on the table to consider it, and then we can have discussion. How's that? I'll make a motion that we accept the director's request for the name change for the department. I'll second it, I do. Um, I'd like to know, has an estimate been done of what it will cost to change the name in terms of um, signage and um, badges and whatever? Uh, the, our signage is limited to what's inside the building at this point, which is one sign outside the door. Our letterhead is all electronic, uh, print it as needed. Um, the majority of the cost is going to be business cards at about $150. Uniforms are going to stay the same for you. Uniforms aren't changing. And emergency management is not going away. That's a, not only a, a legally required piece of what we do, it's a very important piece. So our uniforms are going to stay the same. Okay. It'll be a gradual progression. Okay. A gradual transition. Okay. I just wondered if that was something that was going to be a big change all at once. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Just a, a minute or two on, on the new structure. We did uh, have Eric at that position approved this morning, and, and Gordy had a question, so I thought maybe if you would just elaborate on the The intent is to have a second deputy director whose responsibility is now specifically 901, um, and then the original deputy director is now specifically EMA. It allows those individuals to become subject matter experts in their area instead of requiring them to understand everything. Uh, the goal is to uh, have those people review our current programs and then bring us up to compliance with current uh, methods and procedures. And you are the director, Correct. and could you name the two assistant directors with their positions? Yes, Joe Morales will be deputy director of EMA, and Eric Bale will be deputy director of Maryland. And your intent is to is for Joe Morales to become a certified uh, yes. by Pima certified emergency planner as well. Yeah, emergency coordinator. And he is uh, one training program away from having that completed. Good. Good. Anything else? If not, we'll uh, take a vote on the motion. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. All right, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Advisory Board for uh, James, James, uh, Children and Youth. Yeah, no, I'm not fine with that. I just didn't hear the motion. I'm sorry. Okay. It's been moved so and seconded. I'll second. second. All right. Any questions? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, Opposed, same sign. So moved. The second being a reappointment to the Housing and Redevelopment Authority Board uh, of Amy Leonard, who <coughs> is, uh, as I think you all know, an attorney with Henry Beaver serving another term to 2022. Right, um, go ahead. You good? Yep, go ahead, Bill. All right, I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Amy Leonard to that position. Second. It's been moved and seconded, and I'll com comment that she does a very good job in that capacity of, uh, as a volunteer. Any uh, comments beyond that? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same sign, so moved. Uh, next, I have uh, our second of two farm agreements that we maintain each year. This is a farm lease agreement with Lauren Horning of Fontana Avenue, Lebanon. This is a very small piece of the um, property that is maintained by Community Action Partnership at the Bridge House. But for Mr. Horning to sort of square off the field that he farms, it's uh, just about an acre that he farms that is actually county land, so there's a $150 rental for that. So moved to approve the farm lease with Lauren Horning at $150. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that lease. Any question or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, same sign, so moved have an agreement between the county and the Pennsylvania District Attorney's Institute. This is this is a SAVIN maintenance and service agreement. Uh, SAVIN is the statewide automated victim information and notification system. And this provides victims with notification of when um, defendants or convicted uh, have been either uh, incarcerated or being released or any other activity that might be of interest to the victim uh, is is maintained in this 
database and then communicated by our victim witness department. Uh, one change this year is there is no longer a maintenance agreement charge. So the district attorney's office used to pay a small charge to be part of it, but they've now waived that. So if you're okay on that Saturn maintenance agreement. I make a motion to approve the Saturn maintenance program for the district attorney's office. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Comment. Here's maybe one comment. Yes, I don't want to confuse things. It's, it is a maintenance agreement that waived the fee. The maintenance agreement then consists of uh, our responsibilities to the to the system, being you know inputting data, notifying, and so on. So I'll clarify. Okay. Now we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. And the next one I have is the supervision funds agreement between the county and the Pennsylvania Board of Probation and Parole. And this is the agreement that provides for the flow of supervision funds that are paid by uh, defendants here, by, by those being supervised by adult probation. Uh, those funds are paid here. They go up to the state, and a portion of them then are sent back for, the, for use by the courts at their discretion for probation and parole activities. So this is the annual agreement for that, for the funds to flow. So move to approve the supervision fund for parole. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the supervision fund request paperwork. Um, any question or comment? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, same sign, so moved. And lastly, have a proclamation for the Boy Scout Expo, recognizing uh, the anniversary of the Boy Scouts since February 8th of 1910, and also declaring February 5th through the 9th of 2018 as Boy Scout Week, and they will be holding their expo at the Lebanon Valley Mall uh, starting Monday. Make a motion to adopt the proclamation uh, of establishing Boy Scout Week. So, uh, second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any question or comment? All in favor of the proclamation, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Before Kelly comes in, yeah. Sheriff, would you mind sharing a, a good news story uh, for us? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Good morning, Commissioners. Bruce Quindler, Sheriff of Lebanon County. Uh, just a point of information, good news. Uh, on Monday, this past Monday, I was notified by the uh, president of the Lebanon Lodge Number 42 Fraternal Order of Police, President Scott Bowman, that one of my deputy sheriffs, Sergeant Bradley K. Seifert, was awarded the Lebanon County Police Officer of the Year Award out of over 100 police officers in Lebanon County, law enforcement, uh, one of my men was given this award. And it's a, it was just a really good thing for, for me as far as knowing that it's one of our deputy sheriffs and he's one of our county employees. And I just wanted to share this with you this morning. So it's good news to, to put out there. We appreciate that, Sheriff. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Congratulations to both you and Bradley. Thank you. Thank you. application. Um, DCDED came back with uh, some recommendations 
Uh, one was uh, they wanted to see a little more exact budgeting um, and they wanted to not just have well wishes, uh, letters of um, support for programming, but they wanted to see letters of financial support. Um, in the budget, it was stated that uh, a manager director would be uh, supported because we would be running programs simultaneously uh, since the goals are very similar. Um, but there was some question on um, whether that was sustainable or not. So they, I am here today to request a letter of uh, financial support as an endorsement for the program to be able to give to DCED. I guess we need to have uh, some parameters or some understanding of what we'd be committing to. I, I, a letter of support is one thing, but to right. project uh, support into the future um, of a financial nature is kind of kind of unusual for us. Right. I had requested that um, if the uh, support from the county would be two thousand dollars a year How for much? two thousand dollars a year for five years. Um, I think that would be a uh, a great way of supporting the Main Street program and to demonstrate that you know you, you see quality in, in the programming and what we want to do moving forward. Comment? I have a numerous questions. Oh please. Okay. And I know you're the messenger, uh, so I, I but I have some very hard questions that I need answered. Okay. Uh, before I can commit financially, uh, and some of those things uh, start out with, I have nothing in writing, um, oh, like okay. the original um, application or what the revisions are. I mean, I need an executive summary in writing, something that I have okay. that I can read. I don't do things just verbally. I get everything in writing. Right. Um, I thought I had shared an executive summary, but I will be glad to send that along. I appreciate it. And the next is, what are your successes to date? Our successes to date are uh, foundation building. Uh, we've been doing tremendous of foundation building. Uh, things that are not um, full of glitter and glamour, but uh, we've been doing some policy writing. Uh, we have been putting together committees to uh, actually achieve the goals. Uh, being a organization of one, um, it, it makes it difficult to uh, actually be in all places at all times, so I need committees and um, pe pe people to support it. Uh, we have been very active in um, meeting with property owners, business owners, um, trying to do some um, quick quick and easy kind of programming that would be helpful for the community uh, for the holiday season. Um, we had one of our own rising stars, Katie Trainer, who has been doing murals all over the uh, the general area, probably tri-county area, uh, and she did the paintings on the windows downtown so it didn't look um, uh, empty uh, for the holiday season. We also did a progressive shopping cart to try to get people to uh, shop in the downtown uh, over the holidays. Uh, we had a thousand printed, we had a ten percent return rate. Um, which, which was great for, uh, for just starting to promote that. Um, we are, uh, we've been working very diligently on um, a campaign called Levitt in May. Uh, we had a, a public meeting last night that was fairly successful. Um, and uh, the Levitt in May program is to promote things people, uh, history, 
um, manufacturing of uh, what is made here in the county. Um, obviously, my focus is the downtown, so my ultimate goal is to um, get some of the makers perhaps to take brick and mortar in our downtown. Um, but if we, if we promote and connect uh, our makers in our community, I think we raise all the communities in the, in the county as well as, as in the city. Um, so uh, we have actually several committees under Love and Make. We have an overarching committee. Uh, we have a committee <coughs> who is working on a festival that we'll be having to celebrate our makers in June, uh, June 16th, um, uh, which is the Makers Fest. I've been working, partnering with the uh, Lebanon Valley Council on the Arts to enhance uh, First Fridays. Um, so that's a few things. Okay. Um, thank you for that overview. It helps to hear them. Um, and the next is um, an expenditure report. Did you bring a budget? So that, uh, just like DCED, I have not seen a budget or an updated budget like that. Um, and this is one of the tougher questions I have to ask. Was any of the money allocated to the bid used to go to court in the instance of the day reporting center? No, that all was from the city. Okay. No, no funds. Uh, actually, the bid had absolutely nothing to do with that. All right. So then, uh, the bid did the bid um, in any way survey business and property owners about their they wanted to see that thought, do you know? That was before I came on. Okay. Um, that was already in the courts and being decided by the, I, this is only the beginning of my 12th month, 11th okay. month. Um, so that was already in the courts um, and it is my opinion, rightly or wrongly, that once something is in the courts, you should kind of step back and let's just let that take its course. That's perfectly understandable, but I'm, I'm just relaying questions that have been posed to me, and I did not have answers. Right. Oh. Uh, quite frankly, um, there's, I see no impact on the downtown. Okay. Uh, and, and the bid is not, does not rise to the level of zoning, is that correct? I'm sorry? The bid does not rise to the level of zoning enforcement. No. Okay. No, we, we work with zoning, and we inquire with zoning, but we are not have anything to do with zoning enforcement. Okay, I think people need to hear that again. Yeah. And then the final question has to do with, uh, the one thing you didn't mention, mention was your cleanup of sidewalks and things. Mm -hmm. um, can you kind of outline where that happens and, and the time frames it happens? Um, it, happens until we actually have frost, because once we have frost, uh, the, the litter and things freeze to the ground, and therefore the machine cannot pick it up. It is uh, the sidewalks within the bid, um, you know, it, uh, roughly, and it hog jogs, but roughly uh, Chestnut to Willow, and from 4th to uh, 11th. That's very effective, by the way. Very effective. Good, good. I'm, I'm glad you see the impact. Oh, yeah. Um, the, uh, we also want to put in place other litter control measures um, and perhaps a few more waste cans and, um, you know, work on some, some efforts so people don't litter. And then we will also be uh, participating in the, uh, the National Cleanup Day in, in the spring. All right, well, the specific um, instance that I was presented with was at 116 South 9th Street. Apparently, I'm sorry? 116 South 9th. Apparently, there was a fire. <coughs> uh -huh. um, and there was, uh, it's boarded up, but there was broken glass, and there's still broken glass on right. the sidewalk around that. And right. No one has cleaned it up, and that was a concern right. that was passed on. I, I have to say that. The litter cleanup does not 
relieve the responsibility of the property owners in managing their their property. It just aids in in that effort. Right. I don't think we should be involved in fire aftermath cleanup. No, no. I think that would actually um, create a whole different layer of liabilities. Okay. Well. 30 days have gone by, theoretically, and it's still on the sidewalk in some respects. And um, there was a concern raised, and I'm simply passing it on to you. If you're not the proper avenue, perhaps that could be passed on to the proper avenue. Thank you. That's all my questions. OK. I will uh, be sure to get a budget and an executive summary to you. Thank you. That is uh, probably Monday, if that, if that works. That's fine. As, as you've survived the tough questions, how about um, a couple softballs here? How, your lighting and um, uh, I guess you, you're talking at least in the past about yeah. putting enhanced lighting downtown and those kind of things. Any progress on on that and um, um, cameras, things like that? No, the cameras though, there is a lot of progress in the cameras. Um, one of the delays with that was the uh, bandwidth, so we had to get uh, more, I'm, I'm not technical savvy here, so we had to get more bandwidth, more bandwidth or stronger internet or whatever. Uh, that has been put in place, and actually the monitors go in on Monday, so that is quickly moving forward. <coughs> The um, two thousand dollars you're asking, could we, uh, if we were to agree to do that, would we be able to say we could allocate that to additional lighting for safety or something specific like that, or is that? Uh, um, actually, the 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 way the Main Street program now operates it. In the past, when I was involved with it years ago, it was a matter of. They funded the administration funding. And then the community would contribute to programming. Now it has completely flip-flopped, where they will support programming, but they will not support administrating. So I have to demonstrate that other people will support the administrative funds. Um, you know, but you could say, we are supporting the in your in your support letter. You could say we are supporting the you know the administrator to you know in conduct X, X, Y, and Z. Okay. And what's your timetable for this letter that you need from us? Uh, it would be great if I I told them that we would have the revision back to them by uh, the mid February. So if if we could have it in a week or so, that would be. Wonderful. It would be two weeks. For me? It would be Mr. two weeks. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Bill. Uh, uh, I think uh, the request uh, is, is very minimal and it makes sense uh, to be spread out over five years. So uh, it, it appears that, and I know sometimes at the county level too, we get behind in, uh, you know, getting these requests in. And, I know the state, when they give you some information, then they want to turn around, turn it around quickly. So but with that in mind, uh, and I think the relationship between this Main Street project and tourism in Lebanon County, uh, I would make a motion that uh, the county commissioners commit uh, $2,000 a year for the next five years from our tourism fund that we maintain uh, as county commissioners. Okay. Is there a second? Um, Kelly, I want you to know that I am not against this proposal. However, I don't believe in getting the cart before the horse, and I would like to see the things that I asked for before I participate in an affirmative vote. Is there a second? Not this time. Okay. I'll second the motion. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. I, I will still make oh, sure. sure that you get that information. Yeah. I think you gave us a, a pretty good over, overview, and I, I'm satisfied that uh, the quality's there. So, okay. Thank you. Yep. 
Thank you, Commissioner Ames. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. We stand adjourned.